talked about it, saw what we can do, what's the solution, hey, are you noticing these things? We started to coordinate amongst each other. Hey, do you notice this? Hey, do you notice this? Hey, has the person been off? Am I tripping or have you noticed? And that's important because even though me and the family never talked about how to prepare for a mental health emergency, we actually did a relatively good job of reacting to what the emergency was before it became a major emergency. But we never took proper steps to figure out if there was better that we can do after the emergency because we were just glad the person's okay. Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Juice Jones from Get Home Safe and we are back with another episode of Housekeeping and how many of us or how many of you guys are planning for the future? And when I say planning for the future, I don't mean how much money do you have in your bank accounts? I don't mean what plans do you have that are going to be executed. I'm speaking on how many of us are planning for emergencies. So let me share a story with you. For the past two weeks, about two weeks ago, the house that I live in almost caught on fire. Long story short, the furnace that was in the house was about 10 years over its past due date. And we heard a certain sound that sounded like an animal rummaging in the basement. And what it turned out to be was the fire within the furnace was so hot that it was melting part of the component itself and pieces of metal were melting off of the product, burning the cement. Everyone's okay, obviously. Now, when that happened, automatically went into shutdown mode, figured out where the thermostat was in the house because we shared a house with a landlord and it was a whole bunch of cleaning up and person who owned said house out of town. So, called them out, figured out what was what. They had a solution, had a team come through to replace the old furnace and take a look at what was going on blah 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 right now the people were hired it was like a two-week job every day we were told hey we should be finished on this day it was we need new part we need new pipe um we're gonna have to redo your whole pipe system in terms of the hot water because this furnace does the hot water for the whole entire house and it was like a really frustrating situation but usually i'm the type to plan in hey whatever the th they say it is add three days however long it's going to take add a couple of weeks whatever the promised value of the thing is don't accept what you're told more so be ready for disappointment and if, if disappointment doesn't come cool we're good but if not mm -hmm. at least you're mentally and emotionally prepared for whatever is going on so while this furnace was getting installed and the pipes were getting replaced at some point while I was at the house, my partner and I was at the house, we're in the room sitting down. And as the guys were working on the furnace, we heard a loud gush and splash sound. Long story short, the basement we lived in got flooded. Now, those people would be losing their minds. Oh my God, what could you salvage? Whether it was like, you know, rugs, carpets, furniture, electrical equipment. You know, I got a room full of cameras that I do all these shoots in. And my concern was, this isn't the time to yell at the people that have caused the situation that are going to be the same people that are, so, are the solution to what's going on. So let me calmly take care of what we can and execute it as well as we can and let's see how quickly they come up with a solution for everything that's going on old boy who happened to knock the valve that sent sent gallons of water that was under pressure from the house into our living quarters ran out got the hvac started sucking up all the water that was like all over the apartment the water was like in my office the living room towards the kitchen we were able to block off the water for going into the bedroom which was great long story short within a couple of hours while staying calm we were able to clean up every single part of the apartment and then after that was said and i'm calmly still keeping it together <laughs> and this is all recent like everything was just finished up like a day and a half ago right uh the person who caused the mistake pulled me to the side and was like hey you know i'm really sorry for all the headache and everything that happened when it came to the property and whatever you know 
for your inconvenience, can we break you off a certain amount, not from the construction fee, but harder to go out and take your mind off of whatever's going on. Still report us, still do what you have to do. It's just you guys have been patient with us with everything that's going on. And we really appreciate your patience, especially with the mistake that's happened because you could have lost it and you chose not to. The reason this story is important is when it comes to a mental health emergency in terms of the work that we deal with when it comes to get home safe. We don't deal with mental health emergencies directly, but we do deal with post emergency. And the reason I say that is before mental health emergencies happen, you usually have telltale signs that something's a little bit off. Um, person may be forgetting a couple of things because they're managing so many things or breakdowns getting close. Um, they're off when it comes to a couple of things. And this isn't a description, this isn't advice for you to look out for when it comes to the person's mental health emergency because everyone's emergency is different. But in my experience, when there were folks close to me who had a mental health emergency, what we usually noticed was they were forgetful of very simple things that they were passionate about that had to do with me and them that they couldn't quite remember. They started to become paranoid of the things that was said and done around them and who did what and why. They started to make up stories to make what was going on with them make sense. And then we picked up on that in terms of me and their family. Sat down, talked about it, saw what we can do. What's the solution? Hey, are you noticing these things? We started to coordinate amongst each other. Hey, do you notice this? Hey, do you notice this? Hey, has the person been off? Am I tripping or have you noticed? And that's important because even though me and the family never talked about how to prepare for a mental health emergency, we actually did a relatively good job of reacting to what the emergency was before it became a major emergency. But we never took proper steps to figure out if there was better that we can do after the emergency because we were just glad the person's okay. And that's usually the most dangerous part of a mental health emergency. After the emergency, after the person gets help, after everything gets calm, us as humans and us as people that are glad there's relief in the room and we've done right by the person. When it comes to the work that I do with Total Truth, one of the things I say is healing is a verb. And in order for healing to be a verb, it takes habits. It takes practicing patience. It takes planning out emergencies. It takes planning out successes. When the person success succeeds, how do you celebrate them? How would they like to be celebrated? When the person is down or down or out on their luck, how would they like to be picked up? If things are going wrong with you, who are the people that you would like to reach out to you so you recognize, yo, I may have something going wrong with me and I appreciate hearing this person's voice because it really resets me and brings me back into where I need to be. Whether it's a physical emergency like the story I said with the furnace or a mental health emergency, emergencies take planning. When the flood happened in the house, most of my important things that technical wise could have been destroyed in the flood, I have plastic containers that I put a lot of my stuff in. When it comes to where my equipment is for everything that I shoot for, I actually have a cage that's a little bit taller than me. I'm six, so it's a little bit above six. And most of my equipment that I use is on the utmost top of the rack. Anything else that's after that is sneakers. You can always take it out of boxes, get it washed, let it dry. When it comes to mental health emergencies, there's a certain amount of conversation that you need to have because it's not always about nuance. Sometimes it's about understanding. Sometimes it's about building habits. And sometimes it's about setting the foundation for if we have a continuation or a, or a habit that is built up, we know how to recognize when things are going wrong. And when we're able to recognize how things are going wrong, we could better plan for how we could either help things be right 
or create an environment around that person until we're able to get them the proper help. When it comes to housekeeping, even this series itself, I may talk about a lot of stuff having to do with business. I talk about a lot of things having to do with plans in the future of Get Home Safe. I talk about a lot of concepts that I'm really excited to bring to life when it comes to bringing the space of mental health and wellness together. I say these things out loud as a declaration here and I could look back at it as like, all right, what was my original plan? All right, now that we're closer to the plan, how does it feel? I mean, we've done it before in 2023, but 2023 isn't 2024. So how do I put 2023 and that feeling together with 2024 with the same people we did it with? And do we have something we can still build on? Or do I need to move on to another group? Or do I need to let it go and just be proud of what's been accomplished? And when it comes to emergencies, like what we've been dealing with for the last two weeks, especially that flood that happened a couple of days ago, It really comes down to, do you have the proper people around you for an emergency? And, you know, many of you may be saying, yes, I have the proper people around me for an emergency that's happening. And some of you may say, I don't have the proper people or person around me for the emergency. And before I end off, um, I don't even want to call this a soliloquy, but this breakdown on what's been happening, you know, my private life especially with this housekeeping episode, I'd like for you to ask yourself, why do you not have a person that you're able to depend on for emergencies or people? If people in your life right now are a lacking resource when you need help, then how are you ever able to help yourself? Because sometimes the best way to help yourself is by making sure your voice isn't the only voice that's in the room as you're figuring things out. Sometimes in order to help yourself, you have to admit that my perspective is very limited and I need someone who has just a little bit more reach. Are they able to move the curtain just a little bit more that may benefit me in the thing that I'm working on? Not just who I'd like to be, but how I'd like to feel about who I am and who I'm becoming. The best emergency is the emergency that you've planned for. Not because since you've planned for it, it makes it less of an emergency. It's just when the emergency happens, at least there's a little less to worry about because you've put your plan into action way before the emergency actually happened. You executed the just in case and hopefully you have the funds or the people to take care of the right things. And no one likes an emergency. No one enjoys planning for an emergency, but life is a lot different when you have a flood that's spreading out in the middle of your home going towards the exit and the entrance, and you and your partner have a good idea of understanding most of the things that can be destroyed in this flood are things that could be easily replaced and inconsequential to our actual life and what's going on here. And we could just order what needs to be replaced versus throwing out important memories, throwing out important equipment that I need for the series that I'm working on and everything else. Most importantly, everyone's alive. No one got electrocuted. We threw out all the the circuits and sockets that we no longer needed. And that we still are able to own and keep our hands on the things that are important to us. And I could only imagine how much worse it would have been if I would have been busy or we would have been busy losing it on the person that made the mistake versus seeing what those people who made the mistake were willing to do as they cleaned up the mess they created and just figuring out where could we help for the things that we need done right now. I'm not any less pissed about what happened, but I am grateful that the effort they gave led to a faster solution versus me getting angry and letting it out. And then us arguing versus cleaning up what needs to be cleaned or salvaged and not losing anything of any major importance outside of needing to swift for a vacuum and sanitize the rest of the house to make sure everything's cool. Got a roof over my head, bed still all comfy, studio safe, more interviews to do. And most of all, I'm alive, well and kicking. So this has been another episode of Housekeeping. Appreciate all you homies that pull up. Hopefully this uh, message reaches the right person, gives someone insight and advice on when things are hard, who are you going to be? And also, I hope some of you who may not do that, give yourself permission to plan and execute for emergencies just in case it happens. 
If someone says, oh, why are you planning for an emergency? It hasn't happened yet. Why would you ever want to try and take care of an emergency in the middle of it happening? It's okay to plan and execute things and understand that you plan for just in case and hopefully just in case doesn't get in the way of the life that you're living. And when things hit the fan, it's like, oh, at least I keep the fan on low. So this has been another episode of Housekeeping. Like, share, subscribe. Appreciate all you homies for pulling up. And as usual, peace.